Yeah, I'm thinking that I'm just going to trick the GCN viewers into thinking like we should do that, where I just try to trick them into thinking like that I'm British, because some of the words are actually pretty good, and I think I think that my accent is just fine. So uh, we're here at the, the Dunstan Medieval Village in Yarn Market, and there's diverted traffic, and there's Tiverton over there, and the A396, and we've got Dunstan Castle. It's pretty good. It's slightly weird that you age by about 40 years when you become <laughs> British, but maybe that's, maybe that is. We just all sound really old here. <laughs> Working at GCN means that we're lucky enough to travel the world, riding our bikes in some incredible locations. Weirdly though, we rarely get the opportunity to shout about the amazing riding on our doorstep right here in the UK. But now, We've got an excuse. Four-time US national cyclocross champion and general all-round legend Jeremy Powers is over for a visit. So we have planned an epic ride. And because he's up for a bit of fun, it's gonna be the most English epic ride we could think of. On road, off road, and in cafes. So Jeremy, what do you think of right, when you think of the UK? Um, mainly bad weather, <laughs> a lot of rain. Yeah, that seems pretty fair. Actually. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, think of beer. Have oh, you been out with Lordy already? <laughs> yeah. And I think of history. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we've got quite a lot of old stuff. That is true. Yeah. And what about the riding? You done much? I haven't. I haven't done much riding. I don't know anything about the riding. The venue for our epic ride is in the Exmoor National Park, just a stone's throw away from our HQ in Bath. Many Brits probably wouldn't give it a second thought when choosing a cycling destination, but it's stunning and covered with miles and miles of country roads and off-road trails. Is this breakfast? Can be, yeah. With the beans and everything? Yeah. All right, let's try it. Our ride today starts in the village of Dunster with its beautiful cottages and in the background you'll see a rather splendid castle. Mm. How, how old is that? Uh, I think it's about four times older than the United States of America, although it has been heavily modernised in the 17th century. Yeah, yeah we, got, we got old stuff too. Yeah, sure, sure you do, mate. Yeah. Sure you do. Right, from Dunster, we're going to climb up onto Grabist Ridge okay. and then we're going to drop down before a big ascent onto the highest point in the whole area. <laughs> okay, and, and how high is it? It's 512 <laughs> meters high. Okay, all right, yeah, let's, uh, let's hit that. Uh, yeah. yeah, let's hit that. No, you wait, mate. Yeah, wait. Wait, but the weather is awfully windy today. Do you, uh, did you bring like a little hatchet or anything so that if we get caught out, we, uh, we can like make a fire or something? You mean like survival stuff? Yeah. No, mate, this is England. Never more than four miles from a tea shop. <laughs> I can get down with that. I mean, the fact that our English epic ride is kind of in tribute to your cyclocross background. Yeah. But now we're sort of slogging through British mud. I kind of feel <laughs> slightly guilty. To reassure me, do you do this kind of ride in the back at home? Like exploring yeah. out in the middle of nowhere? Yeah. Yeah, we do a lot of rides. Sometimes on the, uh, we have like a little channel that we talk to everyone in and we'll ask, is it an adventure ride or is it a training ride? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we do a lot of riding like this though. We have a lot of nice kind of uh, secondary use paths and dirt roads and gravel adventures and kind of pick your own, you know, you can do what you want. On drop bars or mountain bikes? Oh yeah, we push the limits of the bars for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
Right, Jeremy, repeat after me. Uh -huh. Hunt Scott. Yeah. Hunt Scat. Hunt Scott. Hunt Scat. Yep. Yeah. Luckham? Yeah, Lacombe. Okay. And, uh, and Wooten Courtney. Yeah. Wooten Courtney. Yeah. W Wooten Courtney. Yeah, that's what I said. Wooten Courtney. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the one on the bottom is uh, pretty easy too. Ford. Ford. Yeah, Ford. Cool. Yeah. Like the American truck. Yeah. Ford. Na named after that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we traversed the side of Dunkery Beacon, but now, as you can see, we're back on tarmac for what is, quite frankly, a pretty steep climb up to the summit. We could have done it off-road, but the straight route is kind of a bit rocky to be all that much fun on skinny tire drop bar bikes. So we're making the most of the fact that they're actually pretty good on tarmac. What do you think of it so far, Jeremy? The ride's fantastic. I, uh, nice. I would have had a, uh, a little bit different gear for this one, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, I love it. It's been really nice and, uh, you know, despite the uh, low elevation, I have to give you credit, there are some pretty steep hills here. There are steep hills down here, that's right. You feel every one of the 1500 feet. <laughs> you do. What up, mate? Top of Dunkery Beacon. Yeah. Made it. Is this storm yet? Yeah, but. To be fair, it's, it's not always this nice up here. <laughs> it's often like rainy and a bit windy. Okay. So we've got on a good day. Yeah. Can you feel the altitude? Oh yeah, I can definitely feel the altitude right now. Yeah. All of 1,500 feet. Oh mate, that is a tough climb. Don't worry. <laughs> it's a tough climb. Should we go down? I think that's a good idea. You're gonna love the descent. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Much mid ride for a brew. Yeah, once in a while. Yeah, because a cafe is pretty much obligatory here in the UK. And I have a feeling you might enjoy Periwinkle Cottage Tea Room. Oh, after all that climbing and descending, and my arms where they feel, I think you're right. That's Periwinkle. All right. Nice dismount, Jeremy. You done that before? Yeah. 
So this, for viewers not familiar with the UK, is a traditional cream tea to be drunk generally between about half past three and four o'clock every afternoon. Mm. Drunk and eaten, of mm. course, yeah. in this case. And it looks delicious. I've, I've heard that the, the Brits drink 165 million cups of tea a day. Is that? Wow. And, and not only that, I heard that the way that you put the milk in your cup actually says something about you as a person, which... That's right, Jeremy, whether you're lower or upper class. So uh, there's your teapot, there's your milk. Right, Let's I'll, see what you're made I'll of. splash a bit of milk in Ooh, there. You, you sure you're gonna do it like that? <laughs> That's just how I do it. And then we're just splashing okay. the tea in there. Well, now we all know, don't we? Thank you very much. Would you like some? Yeah, I'm gonna put the milk in after that. Okay. Now, this jam is a delicacy local to the area. It's called Wurtlebury, and we're told it's a wild bilberry. Jeremy, on the other hand, has opted for something called Chucklebury jam, and no one knows what that is. <laughs> That's why I ordered it. It's delicious. Okay, so Sai, I was told that there is a uh, etiquette also to the, uh, to the way that the, uh, the cream is supposed to be put on first, correct? Well, I believe that's a subject for debate as well, Jeremy. It's not like a cream tea is that contentious. Okay. But some viewers will now be judging you. Okay. <laughs> because I think some people feel it needs to go on after. This is unbelievable. Well, you guys have a lot of... Um, <clears throat> it seems like there's a lot of a lot of rules around your... Oh, yeah. Protocol. Warkle berries and your uh, tea. Yeah, the tea protocol. Well, I think it's delicious, and I'm really looking forward to trying this. Let's not get on, though, to what these are called. Okay. Because whether it's a scone or a scone... Hey, check it out, Jeremy. Award of Excellence from the Tea Council, oh. 1988 and 1987. That's absolutely fantastic. I'm sure they're very proud of those prestigious awards. Should be, mate. <laughs> oh, oh. It's going to be a fun climb. That's the trouble with a cafe stop, isn't it? You've then got to leave. I know, and uh, it looks like we've got a pretty good climb. I thought you guys might like to check out my new Fuji Altamira CX, which uh, I piloted for the 2018 cyclocross season. Today I had a cyclocross tire on here, a 33C. I definitely would have uh, gone for a 40C had I known the uh, English countryside conditions were going to be as aggressive as they were. Um, but I'm using the all new uh, AXS Group O from SRAM. It was perfect. I would have gone for a little bit uh, easier gear. I was running a 44 11 33. I probably would have gone with a 40 and uh, I would have been a lot happier on those steep bits. Thanks, Sai, for taking me along. So last summit of the day, this is Selworthy Beacon. That delightful body of water in the background that you probably can't see because it's exactly the same color as the sky is the Bristol Channel. Jerry, if you look that way, that's an Atlantic Ocean, seamless transition. And of course, that's your ocean, isn't it? We're like, yeah. we're like sea buddies, you're just on the other side. Yeah, we'll just kick and paddle our way across and yeah, we'll be here in no time. Yeah, it'll be fine, man, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, just one last descent to go. We have Storm Gareth finally at our backs now, so hopefully we'll barely have to turn a pedal before we end up in Minehead for a bit. Can't wait. Jeremy, finish line pub. And I am happy to see this pub. <laughs> yeah. It looks awesome. Oh. Right, cider? Local. Okay. Sounds delicious. <laughs> Not many people say that. Oh, wow. How cool is this? Jeremy, cheers, mate. Cheers, sir. That was the most English ride uh, we could find for you <laughs> at short notice. It was absolutely fantastic. I felt like I was in like a bunch of different countries while we were out there. There's so many different terrains. It was like, we were going down, I felt like I was in, you know, California on the coast, just riding through all this beautiful single track with the trees really low and just kind of like, the, the holly was like almost touching you in the face. And then I felt like we were up in the pine trees. It was super low, loamy, beautiful riding. Like I was back in New England and then 
Yeah, and then the huge wide open area with all the sheep and the wild animals just running around. We saw deer, we saw all types of things today. We did, yeah. That was more like Iceland today, wasn't it? Like I'll give you that. Siberia. I'll give but you anyway, that. it yeah. was amazing. It was, it was, yeah, left a big impression. Cool, man. Well, thank you very much for coming over and visiting. It's been an absolute pleasure riding with you. Uh, please give us a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed our epic ride here. And of course, I doubt there's going to be a lot of people from different parts of the UK that are thinking, oh man, why didn't they come and ride in our neck of the woods? So make sure you let us know in the comments section where you'd like us to check out next. We'll find another excuse sometime soon. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to see another epic gravel video, there's one on screen just now.